Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash. Welcome to another podcast interview on today's show. Man, we're going to have a great conversation with Aaron Bickert. He's the executive vice president and general manager of Offer Logic. Aaron, welcome to the show. Hey, Brian, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. You always bring great insight to the auto industry, and I'm looking forward to bring our insight from Offer Logics to you. Yeah, I mean, this has to be a great time for your business. Uh, you and I have been talking about your company growth, and it seems uh, rebates and incentives are back. Uh, EV specific uh, rebates and incentives are flying. And well, it seems like we're getting back to normal. Dealers need help selling cars. Consumers really want transparency and what their final payment's going to look like. Um, let's step back. Is this a renaissance to retail uh, normalcy, or are you just seeing, you know, offer logic elevating what's possible online and in the store for dealers today? Yeah, yeah, great question, Brian. Well, first of all, let's think about what happened over the last five, six years. I mean, you know, back in 2017, 18, and 19, you know, dealers were had all the rebates, all the subvented rates. They were leasing right. vehicles, they were doing everything. Then COVID hit, and then we had the chip shortage, and we had everything. So then there was no no inventory. So <laughs> OEMs were able to pull back. But as we know, Brian, OEMs have to sell cars. Right. right. The only way, they're all most of them are all public companies, if not super public companies. So they have shareholders they have to approve upon. So the only way they make cars is shipping those vehicles to who? The dealer. And then right. the dealer has to then sell those those vehicles to the consumer. So, you know, they all said that there was no re rebates in the sentence are never going to come back the way they were before. Remember that conversation? I remember. It, it, I remember. It, it, and yeah. and listen, yeah. it was billions of dollars that billions. were not being spent. Yeah. And, and now they years, and they had record years, these OEMs, right? Yep. And dealers had record years. But That's now right. we're back to normalization. We're back to the 17, 18, you know, where uh, all the subvented rates are coming out. I mean, we have 0% for 72 months now on Ford F-150s. I mean, wow. we have we have 0% financing on lots of different vehicles across the board. And the only issue that I see out there, Brian, the only issue is leasing has not come back yet. Mm. Um, you know, ALG has not caught up with the residuals. Uh, the money factors are still not being really subvented that well. Now, on the leasing side, of course, on, on the EVs, you know, you have the $7,500. That, That's right. Which, which reduces the cap cost reduction a lot. Imagine right. $25 to $30 for every $1,000. So leasing an EV is the right way to go. Uh, you know, reality is it's just like your iPhone at the end of the day or whatever phone. You don't keep a phone for you know, nine to 10 or 12 years. I mean, right. consumers keep their vehicles. What do they say? 12 years now for a vehicle? Right. right. Can you imagine keeping an EV for 12 years? I, I don't think that's going to work out too well for anybody. Right. It's not going to work out for anybody. So you got to make sure you lease it, at least an EV. That's coming from Offer Logics. That's the best way to buy an EV. But then you also have the hybrids, you know, but they're not really doing subvented rates and, and great rebates on hybrids yet because Toyota has the lead on that and they're understanding that. And I think those cars are pretty much selling pretty quickly, right? I mean, off the shelf. They just, yeah, they, even, they just even at full MSRP still, yep. um, isn't it odd, Aaron, mm -hmm. it wasn't just a few years ago where dealers couldn't get F-150s. Oh my God. Two years ago, they right? couldn't get F-150s. So I mean, uh, people uh, were paying 10, 20, mm -hmm. 30,000 over MSRP for like a King cab. I don't know, you know, these King crew. Range. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I remember my buddy, Scott Weidman, uh, the marketing, uh, director at the Keating Auto Group, he was like, Brian, man, if you know anybody who got these trucks, we're we're paying. And and now they're sitting <laughs> 12 deep. Yo, they know. have 90 day supply. Yeah, they all, they all have a 90 day supply and, and EVs are, you know, 120 day supply and hybrids have zero day supply. So, you know, at the end of the day, there's going to be a, a, an area that, you know, for ICE, there's going to be an area for EV and there's going to be an area for hybrid. But at the end of the day, rebates and incentives are back. Right. Uh, they have to push, they got to make money. Uh, and, but now the issue now comes down to the dealer, you know, is how do they sell these vehicles? They're not all selling at MSRP anymore. They're actually selling, you know, at invoice or a little bit above, except for hybrids and a couple other vehicles that are out there, you know, but if, you know, let's just use the 80, 20 rule, 20% are selling above invoice. The other 80% are selling at invoice, but, um, but that's why payments are so important because right. inflation's here, right. And the average interest rate today is about 7.2% that we see. 
uh, in the marketplace. Now, that's before some vented rates are there. But we also are seeing OEMs doing a combo, which hasn't been done before, a combo where you get a rebate of, let's say, $2,500 and a special APR of 2.9% finance. All right, because normally it was one or the other, right, Aaron? One or the other. We're seeing that. And the other thing that we're also seeing is from Stellantis is they actually confused everybody on this one, but it's not a big deal. They did VIN-based incentives. So they actually took all their VINs and decided to do incentives based on the VIN. Wow. You know, so you can get anywhere from $2,000 on, let's just say, a Ram truck up to $9,500 rebate, depending on the VIN. So now they have VIN-based incentives, and we understand Ford's coming out with the same type of program. Uh, so uh, Well, that gets it more granular, right? So that's the power of offer logics. Yep. Your data feed is flexible to work and match any OEM program. So um, since offer logic works with marketing automation platforms, CRM platforms, direct mail platforms, right? Um, these feeds are powering those personalized offers with accurate rates. This has to be like a data integration bonanza for you, right? Because you built your tech stack yep. to integrate into anyone. So what are the some of the new use cases, Aaron, that, you know, when people understand the data you can provide down to the VIN level in incentives, rebates, what are some of the cool new things that people are doing with your data? Well, we actually have uh, two things. So, so the first thing is credit. Credit's a big thing. You know, inflation is up. Uh, people are not right. paying their credit cards on time. So that's lowering their credit scores because you have more debt to rate, debt to uh, income ratio. So that's at the right. end of the day, you think about that, you know, people don't realize that the more debt you have to income, you have a lower credit score. So that means that you might fall into a different tier. Uh, right. a, lot of, a lot of consumers don't understand. I mean, you and I understand that, but right. most consumers don't understand to say, okay, I was at a 750 credit score, you know, Beacon or a FICO score, but now I might be a 710. So at Offer Logics, we have a complete integration with Equifax that allows our channel partners to integrate into us and be able to pull out a complete FICO score and be able to provide a, we call it a credit perfect payment. And they're wow. able to take that and be able to take, take that um, credit score and take a unified penny perfect payment and take it across their entire platform, not from email all the way to OTT or social or whatever it is, and on a website and make it a completely personalized experience. But we also have a new product that we're just coming to market with right now that we're actually going to talk about at DMSC. Come on. Uh, for you. So we actually integrated in all approximately, you know, I don't know exactly the exact number, so don't hold me to the exact number. Right okay. Now. But the approximately, let's just say there's 17,000 new car franchises in the United States. We have integrated every dealership's inventory into our platform. So we now have a live inventory platform by VIN in real time. So it's updating every hour on the hour. So okay. imagine now, and then we did this for a large dealer group that's out there, very large public dealer group. So now we're able to take those inf that information and be able to see exactly what they're pricing at. So imagine if you're a Ford dealership. And one in a marketplace, and every ten miles is another Ford dealership down the street. Now we have all the inventory, and we can see what they're pricing it for. So if they're on another digital retailing platform, or if they're if they're advertising a payment on their website or whatever it is, we now have the capability of going to market less expensive or the same price without doing any research. It tells us immediately, so we can see wow. out their competitors and provide a penny perfect payment right there on the spot for every dealership across the United States for our channel partners. And why is this important? It's because you want to go to market. Think about this for a second. If you go to market at $599 for an F-150 and your competitors at the market for $549 for an F-150, what's the customer going to click on? They're going to click yeah. on the 549 Or if their website says $549, you're at $599, they're going to go, well, you're cheaper down the street. So now we have the competitive know-how of going to market with that information. And we can also do it with the customer's credit score. Uh, automatically. So once the customer gives us their credit score, the consumer, we're able to personalize that experience right on that dealership's website or in their marketing channel, whatever they're doing. You know, Aaron, this is so important. And I'm glad you're sharing this new product development because I was talking to a marketing director for one of the largest dealer groups in the country. And um, they were telling me a story that I'd never heard someone say it this way. Um, they had a turn rate, oddly enough, that was a little faster than they wanted because of inventory supply. Mm -hmm. So they raised prices 
And when they raised prices, leads went down. Now, I, I never heard someone say, hey, we did a large data study. We yeah. raised prices and leads went down, which shows me that the degree that consumers are willing to submit a lead form is somewhat compared to what they believe the payment should be or the price should be, which means they're shopping. Yes. So with your new platform, mm -hmm. you're going to help dealers increase conversion because you're, if the dealer chooses to be market competitive, not give away the vehicle, but market yes. competitive, they won't pre exclude the cross shoppers. That's correct. Right. And, and I think that's another data point when dealers say my conversion rates are down, my conversion rates are down. Yeah. I was thinking of writing an article saying, Hey, maybe it's about your market price, but then I didn't have a tool. I didn't have a solution to say, well, here's how you can resolve dynamic market pricing. And that could be now through this new uh, data feed from Offer Logic. Well, not only will it do dynamic pricing dynamically for the local area, but you're also going to be able to take the compact vehicle, the subcompact, compact, midsize, full size vehicles, and take all the national offers and say, here are the national offers, and then be able to say, okay, from the national offers, I want to put instead of $29.95 down, I want to do $39.95 down. Now I'm going to be competitive across the board on, on, on that compact vehicle. But reality comes back is, most company, most dealerships only advertise the lowest possible VIN that they have in stock. Right. But, but, but we all know that when the consumer comes in, they're going to move them to a different vehicle because we want power windows. I'm just making it up because that's what we used to say. <laughs> yeah. like oh, you want power windows? You want this? But at the end of the day, we, we want you want Apple Play, you want Android, whatever it is uh, for that particular vehicle. You want the new mirror going across the side. We know they're going to up, upsell them, but reality is we need to go to the market with the lowest possible price and the lowest possible payment that fits that particular consumer's budget and right. be able to make sure that it's unified across all the messaging of all the different vehicles, all the different channels that they go to market with. And that's what we're trying to do at OfferLogix. Anything to do with payments, that's what we do. And what I love about the VIN-based rebates and incentives, uh, and, and you and I are data guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, that really avoids blunders on websites where rebate incentives were applied to a vehicle, an example vehicle, this day's special that wasn't meant to be. That's correct. Uh, and so I, I kind of like the fact that I think you couldn't do VIN-based specials and rebates and offers uh, in a manual world. No, okay. in a manual world, but you can never do in, since every data feed is VIN based, uh, it, it, it makes sense uh, to go down this path. You know, Aaron, you mentioned uh, people a little bit more credit challenged, uh, loan delinquency, credit card delinquency is at an all time high. Um, car prices have still not collapsed on the used car market. You know, they're, they're still pretty expensive. Um, so really helping a consumer find the best car for their budget because they're payment shoppers. <laughs> Most people are yeah. payment shoppers. Well, 94 um, of is us so are, important, right? 94% of us are payment shoppers. Yes. And, and I will tell you that most websites and marketing experience don't facilitate easy shopping by payment. No. And I think that the website companies who are listening to today's podcast, the, marketing automation companies that are listening, uh, inventory management players really need to be mm -hmm. thinking what a partnership with OfferLogix could look like to transform the interface, the shopping tools, the marketing messages, the consistent payments across yep. different consumer touch points. I mean, listen, if the story I just shared was true, rising prices impacting, not crazy, but rising prices impacting conversion shows me consumers are out doing a lot of research. And I think more than ever, dealers who are looking to move their inventory need to make that first blush as attractive as possible. And I think that's what you're saying. I have market pricing now. I have market inventory. I have VIN and rebates incentives down to the VIN level. I can do all that dynamically and if the customer gives their credit score, I can create a penny perfect payment 
that sounds like a platform built for today's economy. Exactly. That's that, that's our whole vision. So we have dynamic pricing for the market. We also have it for the nation. We also have it based by um, uh, you know size, like compact, you know, whatever. I don't even know what the word we're trying to say there. Compact body you know, style, right? Body style, body style. And then from there, we also have it all the way down to the rebates and incentives by the region. So uh, so now they can actually create a dynamic payment consistently across all their mediums and channel and go to market competitively. The channel partner can make sure the dealership goes to market very competitively and they can make sure they go to market with the exact payment for that particular vehicle based on that particular event, uh, which, yeah, is, sure. which is amazing because no one's ever done that before. Uh, and the last thing is, you know, be able to have that unified message be integrated in to all the major players. I mean, Offer Logics is now integrated into every, almost every major, I'm going to say 95%. I've been working on this project for, for about a year. I know you have. Uh, uh, and I got one more to go. Come uh, on. One more major website provider to go. Um, but um, obviously out of the top eight major website providers, I got one more to go. But we're fully integrated in every website provider out there except for one which I, I think I'm going to have them done, hopefully by DMSC for you. Come on. Um, I'm working on it. They're hard, they're hard to work with, but at the end of the day, we're going to get it done. Right. Uh, but but then we're integrating into all these uh, Dig Ad providers, you know, yep. out there across the board. All the major ones have us now Great. fully integrated in. Then we have SEO uh, providers that want to start using us too as well. And then the last is social. You know, so the DigiApp providers, I include OTT and CTV in there. That's but right. In social, um, we're going to have that fully integrated into the major ones, too, as well. I mean, we're already integrated into three of the top, and we're waiting on the last one. Uh, hopefully, we can announce that one at DMSC, too, as well. Awesome. Uh, and, and, awesome. Um, we have gonna, we're going to have a lot of great things going yeah. on at DMSC. Let me ask you yeah. one question. Since you work with so many dealers, and I'm you the, have... Not dealers, the, channel partners. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. meaning yeah. your technology yeah. powers dealers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in effect, you're powering so many of the payments that are presented to consumers on dealer websites. Do you provide any uh, alerts or opportunities? Like say a dealer obviously must in, in the framework of your software uh, say, here, here are my lending partners that I want you to use for my website. What if they're being outpriced in the market because they're not using a bank or a lender that's really trying to buy, you know, a certain piece of the market? Um, do you, through your uh, technology or through your channel partners, can do they have any insight like, hey, because uh, you're doing market pricing, right? Hey, the reason why that guy down the street is... $20 lower per month with this exact same config because they're using this bank. This bank is really buying, you know, right, yeah. buying vehicles. What, what about those insights? Because I'm thinking that all of the market information you have is amazing. The only factor is what if the, the store is not using the best uh, lenders? Uh, I guess the cheese can move, you know, depending on, you know, what people are doing. That's true. Very true. We do not have the, I mean, we can get the insight. We just don't mind that insight today, uh, which is a good idea. So I'm now going to take that back to the, uh, the, the, the dev world and get that done. Cause we have a full, we have 28 develop, development people. Right. I, I'm, and, I'm just and, saying, and you know, but it's a good insight, but the thing with our API is, which is really simple. So right. let's say a, a dealership comes on board through the channel partner. They'll say, Hey, we want these seven or eight vendors or lenders. Yep. And then, now you got to remember, we only have the lenders that publish their rates. So a lot right. of lenders don't publish rates anymore. Mm, okay. And they don't publish standard rates. They only publish their subvented rates. A lot of OEMs went to only publishing subvented rates versus standard rates, which we we have a workaround on, which we can talk about for another 25, 30 minutes on how that all works. But at the end of the day, so they'll give us seven vendors that they, or seven lenders or in captives and one, yep. one captive uh, and how they want to go to market. And then once we get to VIN and within milliseconds, the solution automatically figures out of what the best payment comes out. Right. So, so we don't really need to have the insight. So we know if there's a credit union down the street, they might be buying down a 5.49% interest rate, but we know that. So what we could do is open up an, a, a singular lender, we call it an open lender. 
and say, you know what, we know this credit union is doing 5.49 in your marketplace, and it only buys up to this uh, tier level, and it only buys up to this loan to value, and it only buys up to this amount of vehicles, whatever it is, you know, price of selling price. And we can make that totally custom for that particular deal. Oh, love that. that particular channel part. But we do not have the insight on that. But I am going to bring that back and put that, hey, in, put that into my- Listen, uh, like a self-healing lending, you know, advisor, self-healing. Yeah. Hey, uh, there's something going on in your region. There's a bank really buying into these this section of the market. I, I just thought it'd be interesting. Aaron, yeah. I'm so pleased to hear how every time we sit down before conference, you're a big investor in dealer education. You love uh, winning the integration race and you've really done an amazing job with hopefully some big announcements coming at DMSC. So uh, congratulations. Thanks. Perfect product at the perfect time with greater data integrations and then a view to the future. Because as more and more dealers invest in CDPs and marketing automation, they're going to need a reliable feed of payments that can be used to create one-to-one -one messaging, personalized presentations, and offer logic will be behind those success stories. I'm confident of that. And for the dealers who are watching, um, you should know that your website provider, your digital marketing agency, your um, traditional marketing agency can all integrate with the tools that Aaron was speaking about. So. Uh, you may find out they're already using it, but if not, make sure you demand uh, them to reach out to Aaron to talk about how you can leverage the insights, the market pricing, the dynamic pricing, personalized offers that can go across your entire ecosystem. It's not hard, Aaron, right? Your API makes it easy. Very easy. It's uh, very easy to ingest and the average uh, company takes about two to two weeks to ingest it all. Great. Love it. Love it. Very, very oh, small. Uh, very small for, the, for the dealers and vendors who are watching this podcast, you should know that this is one in a series leading up to the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in Austin, Texas. Um, there are dozens of interviews with thought leaders, tech providers, and, well, visionaries who are working to improve automotive retail. The DMSC conference is the Davos of automotive digital marketing, where you're going to see the leaders in technology, data, data management, data strategy, all presenting at the conference. This is the place to elevate your skills, to take your dealership to the next level, to improve the customer experience, provide that personal concierge approach to selling cars. All of those topics are at DMSE. So just search the Brian Pash podcast on any of your podcast channels, and we will love to have you join our other conversations. Um, Aaron, uh, is it offerlogics.com? Is that the easiest way for people to learn more about easiest your company? Easiest way, offerlogics.com. Right, wonderful. Well, I want to thank you, Aaron. I want to thank everyone who listened in today. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in Austin, Texas. And Aaron, I can't wait for you to share at DMSC some of those big announcements. Yeah, yeah. I think they're going to shake up the yeah. uh, FinTech and auto tech world. So congratulations. Thanks. Thanks for being on the show. And for everyone who's watching, I'll see you next time on another podcast interview. Thank you, Brian.